All right, I'm going to finish up the very end of this to bring it in the last piece. Going to place part 6A, open, yes. Again, bringing it in someplace there. I didn't commit the last one, so I'm going to go ahead and try to commit the last one. You do that by, of course, kind of doing the grip snap here. If you notice what I'm doing is I'm coming to this point and not hitting right click done. Once I hit right click done, it's going to commit that. Committing ground is something else. I'm going to minimize each of these down. I've got my sixth part. Push that open. Push the origin. Right click. Visibility. So we can now go to grip snap. Grab that. It's going to drag it to where it wants. Right click. Done. All right, so now you've got that general truss. Because of the way we really want to be thinking is Z up, I believe, especially if we try to translate and, and put stuff together. I want to notice how, what these things did together. It, it actually went through and pro brought everything in perfectly. So what you can now do is, using that grip stack again, we can go ahead, and using turning this thing around, we can use the same grip snap, right? I'm going to grab all of this stuff let's see if we can grab it all and we're going to turn it all right we're going to see if we can grab all this stuff we're going to see I'm probably not going to be able to i'm going to pause here until i figure that out i didn't figure it out but i did hit f6 home and i want to show that this symbol here means that this is grounded so we're going to want to if we're going to rotate something we're going to right click and no longer let it be grounded then we can go to here get these things generally in the way we want them so we can do our twist here. So we want to twist this so the Z is up. We're going to grab all of these stuff here. So you grab across. You go to your grip snap. Go to there. And now one of the things you have is rotate about a point. And this, of course, you can see as you go around here, you want it to go to the 270. That now gets it so the Z is up, which for most worlds is what should be up. Done. And now when you go to here, kind of click around. You see that there. All right, you now have something. I'm just going to go through really quickly a quick stress analysis, even though you would really want to put some holes and some ports and everything else here. You go about doing the stress analysis by going to the stress analysis environment. But first, you want to save this assembly. Save as, and as I did all these twos, I'm going to call it, put it in the right same spot. I'm going to call it assembly 1A because I've got a bunch of assemblies. Give these things better names, know where they are, say OK. So what you've done is you've done each, you now have an individual part for each of those little sub pieces, which means later on you can go in and change just one of them. Maybe you're doing a little bit of design, but realize when you change it, you, you're going to have to change perhaps the ends. That's what frame generators is great about, is kind of doing a lot of that for you. All right, environments. And really, there's a lot of stuff you can do in here, but we're just going to go to the very simple stress analysis and let you be cautioned that until you can really say what pounds and PSI and pascals and everything is, you want to be very, very non-trusting of what these programs sometimes give you. And even if you are, uh, you want to be able to true thing all the time you're dealing with with models, especially those that deal with load. We're going to create a simulation here. Hit OK. Now what we need to do is we need to eventually give it materials, constraints, loads, and then the contacts basically are going to put constraints at each of your contact points. We'll start with the material. You can change these materials and add them. I do not see balsa, but some of you might be interested in putting in balsa after you, or if you measure some of the information that's important for design, or go out to the web and do whatever you're going to do there. I'm just changing these to all steel. All right. the styles editor will show you again within the material here would be where in fact the styles editor would be the place that you kind of can go in and look at each of the materials. So if we look at here, we go back, we can go to steel here. And it's showing us all the basic properties. You'll notice that these are in KSI. And these you see Pascals.
energy, lots of stuff in there. I'm going to hit OK now here. You've done your materials. The next thing is to do constraints. Constraints are there. You're going to use a fixed constraint in this case. I'm just going to grab the very, very corner there and fix it and say OK. And I'm going to go around then to the other side. You do not want to over constrain things. But in this case, you're just trying to figure out, in fact, how constraints work. And then you build from that. This is definitely a process that you never do right the first time. All right, so I'm going to turn this thing around once, twice. I've done constraints. I'm now going to add loads. Loads, you'll see that in the end, remote force is going to be the kind of the easiest one to deal with because it's going to really tell you where exactly you want to put it. Remote force actually does, right? Remote force actually does um, set a coordinate system as soon as you grab something. So you have to be aware of that. I'm going to grab a load here. A single force, I'll go ahead and put the location of the force right here on the very edge. Grab that location. And you now notice that you want to get used to using vector components. I'm going to just use minus 1,000. You notice it says it, pound force. And I'm going to make the F sub Y also 1,000. So I've got not 2,000 pounds, mind you, not 2,000 pounds. I hit that OK. I've got a force on there. I've got loads. The last thing I want to do is go to contacts, right click, and make automatic contacts. It's going to then assign constraints basically between each of these parts where that were there. So now I have assigned materials. I have assigned constraints. I have assigned loads, contacts. And it's nice sometimes then to look at what this is doing. It's going to give you a mesh view for the finite analysis and that's something later on you tend to you tend if you're very interested in a spot to put more triangles there but that's done basic mesh analysis in the end you then hit simulate solve run and up there you think this see this concept here elements and nodes that's we've talked about nodes and before now you've got a lot more going on in terms of your nodes because it's actually done a node at the corner of every little triangle there and in that, you now see your analysis. You can then start going to things like measuring displacement. You click there. You right click. You activate that one. And that one shows you what has this been displaced the most. Right? Calling a color base and showing you that this stuff hasn't moved in here. This is all moved out here on the cantilever end. You can go to strain, definitions of strain. Right click, activate change in length over length or some sort of displacement. What you're very often looking for, many different things, but von Mises stresses is simpler to stuff that you would, combination stresses, I guess is the best way to do that. You can start seeing you've got some of this basic tension up on top here and then compression on the bottom. So now you start to think about, well, what are these numbers mean there should be, this should go through a negative. There should be compression in here on the bottom. So we're not quite certain in the end if our model is working exactly as we would expect. And that's basically stress analysis, right? There's a lot more to it than that in the report. You get a lot of information. Some of it you may or may not understand, but take a look at the report. I'm going to finish the stress analysis. So that's generally how one goes about going through start to finish on a very basic trust. Obviously, yours might be a little bit more. You can take this assembly now, if you would. You could take that and do a copy, right? And potentially take it to there. And now you have two, but now you got to deal with what? All these co part copies. Let's see if we can do something like this. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but you see I placed it down below. Well, I really don't want those things to be grip edited together, but I could kind of now take this grip snap. Once again, take that grip snap. I'm going to grab each of these things that grip snap and you start to figure out 
but you can drag stuff up and the problem now is inferring exactly that you want to go across there but I think it looks like it kind of wants to keep level there so we're not certain but that's the toughest thing about the assembly view that's better done right click that's better done basically in a modeling view and over here you'll see you do have in fact a modeling view and an assembly view. See how it's carrying around those coordinates and so thanks for listening.